Gaming Bolt presents 15 Things Pokemon Sun and Moon Don't Tell the Player. Pokemon Sun and Moon are now out everywhere, and barring world domination, this means the entire world can now try to take on the latest Pokemon adventures. Like previous Pokemon games, Sun and Moon are absolutely massive. They're overflowing with mechanics and content, and a surprising amount of this stuff is never explained to the player. If you stumble upon it while playing the game, or you had a guide or the internet telling you what to do, you'd be fine. Otherwise, here are 15 extremely basic but essential tips that Pokemon Sun and Moon neglect to tell the player about. And trust us, they're going to make your playthrough of the game so, so much better. Pokedex Changes The Pokedex has always told you where a Pokemon's habitat is, but in Sun and Moon, the Pokedex goes a step further. If you zoom in on the map while trying to track a Pokemon's habitat, it will go as far as telling you the exact specific patches of grass that the Pokemon is found in. That means you no longer have to wander through the route aimlessly, battling waves of useless wild Pokemon while you wait for the low encounter rate Pokemon that you are tracking to appear. You can now restrict yourself to a specific area and make your search much more efficient. QR code scanning can be used to unlock rare Pokemon. Pokemon Sun and Moon introduce a new QR code scanning feature. This is extremely helpful, because not only does it allow you to register a Pokemon as seen in your Pokedex, meaning they should now be easier for you to track, but if you scan 10 QR codes a day, you can unlock some extremely rare Pokemon, such as the Johto starter Pokemon Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile. No more super training, but there is a replacement. Super Training was the excellent minigame that let players control the stat growth of their Pokemon by having them participate in some basic exercises. It was, in other words, the EV training mechanic of older games vastly simplified. Pokemon Sun and Moon sadly do away with Super Training, but there are replacements. Facilities across the Festival Plaza and Pokepalago replicate this same functionality, though you will need to unlock them first. And afterwards, pay using Festival Coins each time you want to use those facilities, at least in the Festival Plaza. SOS Battles and EV Training Horde battles are also gone now, which should in theory mean that EV training is harder even for traditionalists. However, Pokemon Sun and Moon have an appropriate replacement in place this time around. SOS Battles are battles where the wild Pokemon you're fighting calls upon another Pokemon to help, which is usually a Pokemon of the same species. These battles can be used to EV train, and with the use of proper items, could lead you to maxing out the EVs on a Pokemon in as little as a couple of minutes. Rare and Shiny Pokemon SOS battles also make finding rarer specimens of species, such as Pokemon with hidden abilities or maxed IVs, as well as those super rare shiny Pokemon, easier. Simply put, the longer you get a chain of SOS battles going, by killing the help a Pokemon calls, then letting it call for more help, and so on, the higher your chances become of finding Pokemon with max IVs, hidden abilities, or shiny ones. Not only that, but Pokemon can also call upon otherwise rarer Pokemon to help during SOS battles. So, let's say for example, at the very beginning of the game, a Bagon can call upon a level 10 Salamence to help, which is the only way for you to get a Salamence without evolving a Bagon, and certainly the only way to get one at level 10. A lot of Pokemon, such as Pikachu, are only found as SOS partners in the wild. In fact, it's either that or leveling their pre-evolutions all the way up. Stopping wild Pokemon from calling for help. Okay, so let's say you're playing casually, and you don't care about EVs, IVs, abilities, shininess, or you just don't want to kill lots of Pokemon senselessly. Say you just want to catch Pokemon and go about minding your own business. Wild Pokemon persistently calling for help, leading to each encounter being dragged out, and also leading to wild Pokemon being harder to catch as a result, can be really annoying. Thankfully, there is an easy way to ensure that Pokemon never call for help. Just paralyze them, or put them to sleep. Much more humane. Once the status condition has been applied, they will stop calling for help. Do note, however, that this trick won't work on totem Pokemon. EVs are shown on the Pokemon status screen. Keeping in line with EV training, you'll be happy to know that the game no longer keeps EV growth of Pokemon hidden and makes it visible to players on the Pokemon status screen. Just check the graph on the upper screen when you open up a Pokemon status screen. It shows the Pokemon stat and EV spread. This is basically identical to the graph that Super Training used to display, but it's now far easier to find, and it is where you would expect it to be. Only Female Salandit Evolve Salandit is an excellent fire poison type Pokemon, which is among the best new designs this generation. A lot of players, especially ones who did not start out with the fire starter Litten, probably want to catch one, particularly since its evolution, Salazzle, is a total badass. However, before you spend all your time into raising a Salandit, it is very important that you know, only female Salandit evolve. Male Salandit do not evolve. The game never tells you this, so it is possible for you to have spent a good dozen hours raising a perfect nature Salandit, only to learn that it's entirely useless. 
Female Solandid are extremely rare in the wild. Only 12.5% of all Solandid are female, but you could either increase the odds of one showing up by having a male Igglybuff or Eevee with cute charm as the lead Pokemon in your party, or you can simply catch a male and try to breed a female one with Ditto. Catching Wimpod Wimpod is a rather weak bug-type Pokemon that you nonetheless want on your team, because its final evolution is incredible, and is probably going to be one of the most competitively viable Pokemon of this generation. Catching Wimpod, however, can be difficult. Only one is found in the overworld, and if you try to approach it, it dashes away. The easiest way to catch it is to simply ride a Tauros and charge right at it, so that you outspeed it and force an encounter with it. Once a battle starts, try catching it on the first turn itself. Give it too much time, and it uses its Wimp Out ability to escape the battle. Z-moves are variable. This is important, but the effect of a Z-move actually depends on which move you use to activate it. So whether or not a Z-move is a physical or special, for instance, or what its final power will be, depends on which move you're using to activate the Z-move in question. As a result, if you, for instance, are using a physical attacker, then you should always use its highest powered physical attack move to activate its Z-move. Check Pokedex entries for alternate forms and mega evolutions. The Pokedex used to be pretty simple. It had one page per species where it would have that species statistics, habitat, and cry. Now, however, between regional variants, alternate forms, and mega evolutions, one page just isn't cutting it for many of the species, which is why it will please you to know that you can now read Pokedex entries for alternate forms, regional variants, and even mega evolutions of the Pokemon. Just go to a species Pokedex page and then navigate to the next page over. That should open up the entry of any variants of that Pokemon that you registered. Version Exclusive Trainer Customization Options Pokemon Sun and Moon feature an expanded version of trainer customization options that X and Y introduced, but they introduced some restrictions all of their own. Specifically, there are different articles of clothing and accessories that you can only get in either Pokemon Sun or in Moon. Warmer colored shirts, such as red, orange, and yellow, as well as accessories in those colors, can only be found in Sun while cooler colored shirts and accessories such as blue or green can only be found in Moon. You can always get a white shirt and have it dyed to whatever color you want in the Festival Plaza, however, you know, like a casual would, or you can also interact with users in your Festival Plaza and see if you can order some article of clothing they are wearing directly from them. Pokepelago The Pokepelago is a nice facility that is populated by the Pokemon that you deposit into your PC. In other words, all Pokemon not in your active party and doomed to staying trapped in a computer forever. You can develop this facility by using Pokebeans, also used in Pokemon Refresh, and get rare berries, items, and even EV train your Pokemon in this way. Free Beans Once a Day Beans are used in Pokemon Refresh and to develop the Pokepelago, which in turn yields more beans. But did you know that you also get some free ones daily? Just go to the cafe at any Pokemon Center, and the first time that you do, you'll be given a free treat that cures all status ailments for one Pokemon, as well as some beans, for you to use as you see fit. Rebattle any legendaries you may have accidentally killed. The legendary Pokemon can be extremely difficult to catch, especially if you happen to encounter one when you don't have the right Pokemon or the right items on you. So what if you end up killing one by mistake? Yes, even the God Pokemon. Well, the good news is that all hope isn't lost. Any Pokemon that you may have caused to faint will respawn in its original location if you go back and beat the Elite Four. Just make sure you go prepared for it this time. And that wraps it up. What are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it on Twitter and Facebook. And why not consider subscribing? We upload some really cool videos almost every day. Thank you for watching this video, and happy gaming!